Hey everybody, welcome to Speak Up for Blue TV. I'm Andrew Lewin, founder of SpeakUpForBlue.com, and today I'm going to chat all about sea turtles. I'm going to give you tips on how you can protect this majestic species. Okay, for those of you who are not familiar with Speak Up for Blue TV, this is a channel where I make you aware of ocean issues, educate you on the ocean and its species, and help you take action to protect the ocean. And today we're going to chat about sea turtles. Now I've discussed sea turtles here on this channel in the past. So for those of you who haven't seen those videos, after this video, I suggest you click on the link in the description below and check out the videos to educate yourself more on these wonderful, wonderful animals. So now I'm going to take you through what I think you should know about sea turtles. Now there are seven species of sea turtles in the world today. Now I'm going to list them, but they're not in any order of importance. So there's the leatherback, the loggerhead, the hawksbill, the green sea turtle, olive ridleys, Kemp's ridley, and the flatback sea turtle. Now sea turtle adults range in size from a small two feet to a massive seven foot turtle, which is usually the leatherback turtle. Now all turtles have a hard shell, except for the leatherback turtle, which has a series of bony plates underneath its leathery skin. Now sea turtles spend most of their time in the ocean where they feed on various animals and plants, such as algae, seagrass, jellyfish, anemones, mollusks, shrimp, and even some small fish. Now of course, each species has their own variety of diet. Now let's talk about reproduction. Now to get a cute little sea turtle baby, females will swim to the shore, out of the water, up the beach, dig a sandpit, lay 50 to 200 eggs into the sandpit, and then go back to the sea. The eggs will incubate, eggs will hatch, sea turtles will come out. Now this is the tricky part, because sea turtles have a very low survivability, especially when newly hatched. Only about one to 5% of sea turtles will actually make it to adulthood. So they have challenges like getting across the beach and into the water. They can get picked off by birds, they can go the wrong way if there's a lot of lighting that's coming from the street, or they just get picked off by other animals. And then when they get into the ocean, they're so small and they can't really defend themselves, so there's a very low chance or a very high chance actually of getting eaten or something happening to them. So, it's the tough life of a sea turtle, but that's the reproduction and that's their life cycle. Now because of this low survivability, the all seven species of sea turtles are, are considered endangered and are highly protected around the world, especially in the US. Now other than death by natural cause, sea turtles get killed by two major reasons. One is egg poaching, and the other is getting entangled in fishing nets. Now for a while, these populations of sea turtle species were declining fast, but a passionate and active sea turtle conservation community have been working really hard with coastal communities, fishermen, and governments to bring back these iconic species from the path of extinction. So one such example was highlighted in a recent article out of Angola, Africa, where an almost 10 year program was implemented to change the declining sea turtle population back into a booming population. Now this program worked to educate local schools, families, and fishermen on how their human impacts can affect the sea turtle population. Over the past decade, this program has helped save over 9,000 sea turtle nests. Now just to put it into perspective, Back in 1980, the number of nests found on these beaches in Angola were 75 per kilometer, 75 nests per kilometer. Now that number decreased significantly from 1980 to 2000, from 75 nests per kilometer to 27 nests per kilometer. Now when the program was put in place after that, then the number rose back to over 75 nests per kilometer. A huge success for this program. Now the program is scheduled to continue with no end in sight, which is fantastic for the sea turtles, because the hopes are that the program will actually restore the number of nests per kilometer to pre-1980 time and allow this sea turtle population to restore success. Now this is especially important because Angola is the second largest exporter of oil in Africa other than Nigeria. Now this is important because a high population of sea turtles will be more resilient to oil spills and any other kind of catastrophe that can happen around oil tankers and the oil industry in general. Now there are similar programs out there to protect sea turtles and they're scattered all around the world. However, there need to be more to protect these iconic species. And everyone needs to do their part to protect the sea turtle. Which brings me to the tip of the day. This is my favorite part of the video. Here at Speak Up for Blue TV, we pride ourselves on offering advice as to how you can help protect the oceans and its species. We offer tips where everyone can take part and create a healthier ocean. So today's tip is an easy one, and it's to help protect sea turtles. Now, as I mentioned previously, sea turtles like to feed on jellyfish. Now, unfortunately, sea turtles often mistake floating plastic bags in the ocean as jellyfish. So they come up to them, they eat them, they try to swallow them, choke on them, and then they can die. So this week's tip is an easy one. Switch from plastic bags to reusable bags at the grocery store. And my wife and I, we use reusable bags all the time, and we, we even store them in our trunk of our car so that when we go to the grocery store, we never forget reusable bags. And, we don't, and, we, and we're not forced to use plastic ones. Now, I also like the reusable bags because they're actually bigger, you can fit more items into them, 
plus they have some pretty cool designs. Now of course there are many tips out there to save sea turtles, but I want to hear from you. What's your tip to save and protect sea turtles? Add your tip in the comments below and start a great discussion. Now every week I'm going to tell you who the Ocean Leader of the Week is. Now, this is someone who has demonstrated extraordinary leadership in the ocean conservation community. Now since this week's theme is all about sea turtles, I've chosen one from the passionate sea turtle conservation community. Now this week's ocean leader is Diego Moga Sandoval, who's 26 years old from Costa Rica. Now Diego worked with the con sea turtle conservation group Widecast, which helped monitor Costa Rican beaches for sea turtle nests and helped protect the eggs from poachers. Now I was hoping that the declaration of the first ocean leader on Speak Up for Blue TV would be a happy one. But unfortunately this is not the case, because a couple weeks ago, Diego was brutally murdered on the beaches of Costa Rica, doing his job, monitoring sea turtle nests and protecting the eggs from poachers. Now Diego and his crew were responsible for monitoring the beaches of Lehman, Costa Rica, which unfortunately is also a suspected favorite spot for drug traffickers to move their shipment. Now the reports of the murder are conflicting, but a lot of them say that the drug dealers that are trafficking on this beach, who may or may not be involved in sea turtle poaching, were responsible. No matter who committed the murder or what events actually took place, the loss of Diego has devastated the sea turtle conservation community and the ocean conservation community at large. They are both small communities where many of us know each other and have formed great friendships over time and we rally around one another to help fuel our passion to protect the oceans and its species. Diego died doing what he loved, saving and protecting sea turtles and ensuring that they live for future generations. Now I didn't have the good fortune of knowing Diego, but I'd like to express my deep sympathies to his family and friends. Reports of Diego's murder are skeptical that the murders will be found and punished to the fullest extent of the law. Now I hope that the Costa Rican police find the killers, bring them to justice so that other sea turtle conservationists like Diego, who are passionate about saving sea turtles, can feel safe doing what they love. I've added a link to a petition below that will urge the government of Costa Rica to bring these killers of a great, passionate ocean leader to justice. Now if you feel strongly about protecting sea turtles in Costa Rica, then I urge you to sign the petition in the link in the description below. Now finding these killers and punishing them will help other ocean conservationists feel safe when they go out and protect sea turtles in Costa Rica. Now Diego was the definition of an exemplary ocean leader. He did what he loved no matter what the cause and helped protect sea turtles. And I am very proud to declare him as Speak Up For Blue TV's first ocean leader. That's all for me today. Tune in next week where we're going to discuss plastic pollution and I'll give more tips on how you can reduce your plastic pollution impact on the ocean. I'm Andrew Lewin. Happy conservation.